Good morning. At least it's morning for me. Um, I'm going to give you um, some short notes on figuring out the enthalpy of a reaction using heats of formation. Okay, you've seen this list of the different types of delta H's before. I want you to focus on the one in red and the one in like bluish, tealish color. Um, the one in red is what we're usually going to be looking for, which is the enthalpy of a given reaction. That's what we looked at in previous notes. And then we're also going to focus on a new type of enthalpy called the enthalpy of formation. And it's the heat absorbed or released by one mole of a compound when it's formed or when it's created from just simple elements. And I'll show you what that looks like. So the enthalpies of formation are always going to be given to you in the back of a textbook or given to you in a list on a problem. Um, you will get a handout from Charvella and I with a list of these guys that you can always be looking at. Um, but one of the first columns you will see is delta H with this little um, circle raised to the power and an F. And we know that delta H is enthalpy. Um, what might be new is that little F. It's the formation of whatever substance is listed, and it's the formation or the heat that's given off when it's formed from the elements in their standard state or their usual conditions. And then that little raised up circle means that this is occurring at standard conditions. So these are measured at one molarity, um, one atmosphere pressure, and 25 degrees Celsius. So on the chart given or in the back of your textbook, let's look up the delta H of formation of gaseous butane. Um, and you should find that it's negative 124.73 kilojoules per mole. So we know that that delta, that triangle, tells us change. But change for what? What is this change coming from? Well, I'm guessing it's some sort of reaction. But again, like what reaction are we looking at? All I know that it is that it's butane. It's C4H10. Well, the, defini the definition of uh, heat of formation is forming that substance, um, forming one mole of it from its elements, and those elements are at their standard state. So carbon is a standard by itself, a solid, and then hydrogen is a diatomic gas. So if I'm forming one mole of C4H10, that's going to come from four moles of carbon, and five moles of this H2. And so the heat of this reaction forming butane is equal to negative 124.73 kilojoules per mole, which is ultimately the heat of formation forming one mole of this butane. Okay, so the heat of formation is equal to the heat of the reaction of forming that one mole of butane. Quick refresher, there are five ways to solve enthalpy problems. We've already looked at calorimetry using Q equals MCAT. We know it's a calorimetry problem. If they give me two temperatures, they say the word calorimeter, maybe they give me some specific heat or C values. We've looked at solving using stoichiometry, um, which is, I think, the hardest to identify. Usually there's a balanced equation. They give you grams or moles of one of the reactants or products, and maybe the heat of the reaction, and they're asking for, if we use this amount, how much, what is the heat that's produced? And and today we're going to look at products minus reactants by using those enthalpies of formations. Because if I know the enthalpies of formations of each of the reactants and products, I can figure out the heat of this new reaction. If you want to identify if it's a products minus reactants problem, you're going to be looking for um, the delta H of formations provided either in a list or a data table if they say go to the back of the textbook or refer to the table about the heat of formation it's a sign that it's a products minus reactants all right so i call this the big mama equation because we're going to use it a lot and it's the idea that the heat of reaction is equal to the sum of the moles times the heat of formation of the products minus the sum of the moles times the heat of formation of the reactants. So I just think of it as products minus reactants, um, and I'll show you what I mean by sum and moles and all of that. All right, I'm a better teacher when I can just explain using an example. So we have this reaction, and we're looking for the heat of reaction of this reaction. And they give me um, the standard heat of formation values in a table. I just stole these from the back of the textbook. There's the page numbers if you need to look them up. Or you can look at your, your chart given. They should be similar, if not identical. Okay, so let's try to solve this guy out. I'm going to start with the MgO solid that's underlined in red. If you look, I took one mole times negative 602 kilojoules per mole. That 602 kilojoules for, per mole came from the provided heat of formation, and I'm multiplying it by one mole because in the balanced equation, there is only one magnesium oxide. 
Okay, so we'll multiply those together. Next, we're going to look at um, adding the next product, which is our water, and there's one mole of water times negative 286 kilojoules per mole. That is um, the heat of formation of liquid water. So these are my products on this side. I usually put them all in one bracket together so I can keep it separate. Minus, now let's look at our reactant. There is one mole of magnesium hydroxide. It has a heat of formation of negative 925, so that's what you're seeing being multiplied there. I mathed and got negative 888 kilojoules for my or my products and then um, the negative 925 from my reactants and be careful when you're subtracting a negative. I know this is not pre-algebra, but you'd be surprised. AP Chem kids make lots of silly mistakes, so just go slow and always double check. So I got the heat of this reaction as 37 kilojoules. That's really per mole each one time this reaction goes and we see that it's positive. Oops, hold on. We see that it's positive, so that is an endothermic reaction. We are absorbing heat for this reaction to occur. All right, same type of problem. I have a balanced chemical equation. Um, this time, though, they're giving me the heat of this reaction, and they want to know what is the heat of formation for acetone, for one mole of acetone. Okay, so we're going to try to look for, solve for that missing value. I want you to notice that oxygen O2 gas is worth zero um, for its heat of formation, zero kilojoules per mole. Um, if an element is in its standard state, how it exists at zero degree, or excuse me, 25 degrees Celsius and one ATM pressure, um, zero is going to be what the heat of formation value is. Sometimes that is given to you, like I've given to you in the list, like I've literally put, it, put in zero, but other times, the AP exam expects you to know. So they'll just leave that out um, and expect you to know that it's worth zero. Take a quick look at the list provided um, or in the back of your textbook, and I want you to just take note of what, what the zeros are for the heat of formation. Um, you don't have to memorize them, but after we do some of these problems, you'll start to see um, like the diatomic gases, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, those guys are, oh, and nitrogen, excuse me, those guys are gonna be like as diatomics in the gas form will be zero. Some things are as ions. You'll start to get used to it, but um, maybe just browse through the list once and make note of the ones that are worth zero. Same idea as the last problem. We're going to take our products, which we're going to start with the carbon dioxide. This time carbon dioxide has a three in front, so I'm going to take three moles times the heat of formation of carbon dioxide plus three moles of water times the heat of formation of water, so those are my products, minus, we have one mole of the mystery, so I put an X in because that's our question mark, so we're going to really be solving for X, and notice I left out oxygen from solving completely. Could you do four moles of oxygen times zero and add it to this? Sure, but you're just getting X plus zero, so it doesn't really make a difference. But if it helps you, multiply the number of moles four for oxygen times zero. Great. So I did some math to get negative uh, 2,038.5 kilojoules for my products minus just one times X minus X. So I'm able to solve for X and I get the heat of formation for C3H6O, which is negative 248.5 kilojoules. And really I should have per mole. That's my mistake. Okay. Because we have this mole value here. So it's for every one mole of um, acetone. Last problem, I would like you to pause this video and try to solve it out. And on the next slide, I will have the answer for you. Let me know if you don't get it right. I'll help you like figure out where maybe we went wrong. So hopefully you remembered that aluminum um, is a solid at room temperature, so its heat of formation is zero, and you calculated then out the heat of this reaction as um, negative 206, negative 2,677 kilojoules. Um, hopefully you got it right.